the best things to do in York mostly revolve around the city's long history, which it proudly displays. The maze of historical streets in the city centre create the feeling of walking back in time. It's a place of old traditions and quirky little details that make it a great place to just walk around and explore. Don't think that the city is just a giant museum though, it's a busy, lively place with a lot to see and do throughout the day. Be sure to pack some comfortable shoes because the city of York is best explored on foot. The distances between attractions is rarely long, many of the old streets are too narrow for vehicles, and parking is hard to find. To make your first day in York a little easier, take a look at our recommendations for the essential stops on the way. So the shambles, yes. very old streets of York. So if you want to imagine what England was like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, yeah. you come here. Yeah. And they just get really, really narrow. You can see the streets yeah. where the horses and the carriages yeah. used to come. Yeah, and, and, uh, so let's go and explore the shambles, see what it has to offer. Let's go. So let's follow, follow Hanny. Let's blah, blah, blah. No, all right. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> I may not look, I may look calm, but in my head I've killed you three times. Hey, missing husband and a dog, reward for the dog. The Shambles is one of York's oldest and most fun streets. The buildings date back to the 14th century and have the iconic overhang of that period, but are now so old that they lean over and virtually touch at the top. Be sure to check out the Shambles Market, which is best explored early in the day, before it gets busy, and get your photos before the very narrow, very popular streets fill up too much. This whole part of York, leading up towards the Minster, is a maze of narrow streets, with interesting mm, shops on every corner. Chocolate brownies, bacon toast. Oh, mm. <laughs> One thing all this walking does is generate an appetite, so time for a coffee and a scone with cream and jam. Let's go. Let's go. An authentic British scone is the perfect accompaniment to your warming cup of tea, particularly when served with clotted cream and jam. Thank you. Thank you. Cappuccino, scum, cream, strawberry jam, hot chocolate, honey. Two hours later. Guys, look at the tourist attractions. This is the queue behind. There's the queue behind us. Whatever it's for. Don't know. <laughs> Do you know what the queue's for? Oh, it's for the ghost thing just up there. Oh, right, right. Is that what it's for? Oh, right, right, right. I don't know. Anyway, the shambles. Apparently, I've been doing some reading. It's uh, the best example of a medieval street in the world. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Most of these buildings and the street were built in 13th to the 15th century. All right. Look at the key. All right. So let's move on because there's lots to see, lots more to do. Let's see what's around here. Thank you. 
Look at that building. Look. What about it? It's old building. Yeah, it's old, but it's still there. Let's go. Uh, this way. Oh, on the other side. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go down here, shall we? I don't know where we're going. This is to the shambles market. Not shambles. <laughs> <Sambal him. laughs> no. This one is shambles. This is the shambles market. Shambles market. Do we have a look in the shambles market? Yeah. Or shall we just carry on walking? Maybe just carry on. Nothing there. Nothing there. So, ooh, loads of places. That way or that way? Which way? That way? Or this way? Let's go this way. More old buildings. Yeah. I think, I think the shambles is only a couple of streets. But look at this one behind it. See how bent it is. Bendy. The woman back. Still walking. Tile tapas. Oh, there's lots of restaurants. What we got here? Boss Boss. Oh, hello. What's this? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. The, the middle bit was for the horses. The middle bit, just here. That's for the horses, so they don't slip. And then the ones on the side, here and here, that was for the carriage. So cobble streets. Whoa, look at that. It's nice. That's a nice looking building. There we go. Look at Hanny's dress, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> beautiful dress. There we go. It's a beautiful dress. You can see lots of galleries, lots of uh, cafes. Let's go. York Minster or York Cathedral um, was completed in the 15th century, 1472, if my memory serves me right. And it was completed after, get this guys, after seven centuries of building. That means it took 700 years to build this thing. 700. And they're still trying to fix it. Anyway, I'll turn the camera around so you can see a bit better. See what I mean? They're still trying to fix it all up. If you are interested in learning more about this magnificent cathedral, then you can look it up online, Google it, York Minster. 
I can always leave the link in the descriptions. But it's huge. Dedicated to St. Peter. Anglican Church. But I'm just amazed that it took seven centuries to build this thing. Wow. Fun fact, an ancient local law ensures that the historical York Minster remains among the tallest building in the city. The Gothic-style cathedral towers over the old part of York, at a height of 235 feet. If you've got the energy, and the money to pay the, the modest bells. ticket fee, £16, climb the 275 steps of the central tower to see the rooftop gargoyles, and share their view across the historical streets of York city centre. Alternatively, if heights aren't your thing, just enjoy the vaulted magnificence of the interior and the sense of peace it provides. So, is that the uh, end of the minster? Yeah. Yep. So, what are we going to do now then? Lunch. Lunch. Good idea there. I like your thinking. I can't find it. Give me some. There we go. So, lunch. What do you fancy for lunch? Right. Hey. Don't know. Maybe chicken. Chicken. Barbecue chicken. Okay. Yeah, I fancy just a sandwich. Something like that. Yeah. So we'll go and find a cafe. Let's yeah. Go. Let's go. The first treasurer for York Minster was appointed in 1091 when the office was established by Archbishop of York, but all that remains of his original house is an external wall which forms part of Gray's Court, and sections of 12th century masonry in the present treasurer's house for which it is uncertain whether they are in situ or have been reused. As the controller of the finances of the minster the treasurer required a grand residence to be able to entertain important guests. The residence served in this capacity until 1547, when the reformation of the English church brought the job of treasurer to an end. The last treasurer surrendered the house to the crown on the 26th of May, and it was granted to protect a Somerset by whom it was sold to Archbishop Robert Holgate. Thomas Young, Archbishop between 1561 and 1568, and his descendants are responsible for the structure of the house as it is today. In the early 17th century the Young family added the symmetrical front and almost entirely rebuilt the house. In 1617, the treasurer's house played host to royalty when Sir George Young entertained King James I. The house then passed through a number of private owners including Lord Fairfax and over time was subdivided into separate tenements. More examples of old streets in York, cobbled streets, old houses, and what a beautiful backdrop, wow. <laughs> Oh look, even more old houses. You know, we're, we're trying to find a cafe somewhere to eat. But... Some, Will, some Williams College founded 1461. There's a cafe over here. Yeah? You know what, I love these doors. Yeah. But it's like that still. Crumbs, what? Cupcakes. No, it's just cakes and stuff in it. And sandwiches. More cupcakes. Eh? Milkshakes, cupcakes. And then look how old this place is.
the ladies pick it yard I mean I think mm. it's all right these are the um little water Yorkshire Museum Gardens mm. very pretty yeah so yeah now I'm sure eagle-eyed people who watch these videos will realize that we've actually changed our clothes <laughs> how is that possible when we only came here for a day trip are you gonna tell them no, no. You have to guess, how can we manage to change clothes if we only came here for a day trip? Hmm? Answers on a postcard. Or, in today's modern world, answers in the comment section. And let's take a picture as my wife has requested. As she does every time I start videoing. Take a picture! Take a picture! Take okay. a picture! Alright. Yorkshire Museum is situated in York Museum Gardens, an idyllic haven with an array of plant species, wildlife, and historical features to explore. Established in the 1830s by the Yorkshire Philosophical Society, the gardens are famed for their fantastic collection of trees, shrubs, perennials, and bulbs set against the stunning backdrop of the medieval ruins of St. Mary's Abbey. Right, hi guys. This is the... Uh I know it only seems that we've only done a few things, but honestly, if you're going to come to places like these, you want to take your time. Take it slowly. I mean, there's no rush to, to see everything. And there's so much to see, all the shops and the little streets and everything. So today, yeah, so what? We saw the shambles and the uh, York Minster. But it's taken us four hours just to get around there. There's so much more to do here. You know, there's the Clifford's Tower, which is a relic from the Roman time. There's the Yorick Viking Centre, obviously, the Vikings. Uh, there's the City Wall, and of course, the Railway Museum. So if you like steam trains or any kind of trains, that's a must. So for today, from Hanning, not from me, stay tuned for part two. And we'll do all the other ones that we just mentioned. But until then, take care, stay safe, and look after each other. Bye.